How are you? I hope you are all good. In today's video, Ruchel Ace will explain you how Base64 encoding algorithm works. Are you ready? Let's go! You might have heard about Base64, but what exactly is Base64? To keep it simple, it is an encoding technique. You can think of it like a sort of translation. What is Base64 used for? Well, there are various things for which Base64 is used. Among them, finding, safely encoding image or media data, attaching files when sending emails, or saving binary files to databases when blob is not available. There is an important aspect I want to highlight. Do not make the mistake to confuse encoding with encryption. They're not the same thing. Uh, for instance, you can't use Base64 to create password hashes. You need encryption algorithms here like uh, MD5 or SHA-256. Text encoding in Base64 can be reversed or translated back while a hash is not uh, reversible. Base64 is named like this because it has an alphabet consisting of 64 characters. 26 letters, the common ones, you know, from English alphabet, both in uppercase and lowercase, uh, that makes 52 so far. Add the 10 digits and plus and slash special characters, and you get to 64. Well, actually, there is an extra character, but I'll come back later to this. ASCII table has 256 characters, which is 2 to the power of 8. Base64 has 64 characters, which is 2 to the power of 6. Remember this because it will help you understand the whole process. Now let's get to see how this encoding works. Let's assume we have the following text we want to encode. I am root. Hackers want to be root on the machines they hack. Our first step for encoding this text is to get the corresponding decimal value for each character in our string. Keep in mind that we must take into consideration also the spaces between the words. They are also characters. In order to do this, we will use ASCII table. So for uppercase I, the decimal equivalent is 73. For a space character, we have 32, lowercase a is 97, and so on. Here we have the rest of the values. The next point is to take each of these values and transform them into binary. Basically, translating from decimal to binary. So, 73 in binary is 01001001. 32 is 00100000. And here they are for uh, the other ones. When you will perform uh, this transformation, some tools will not show the leading zeros, since they're not necessary. However, we need to add them until we have the 8-bit representation of the number. You will probably wonder why we need to do this, since it's, it doesn't make any change. Well, do you remember when I said that ASCII has 256 characters, which is 2 to the power of 8, and Base64 has 64, which is 2 to the power of 6? The thing is that we will basically go from 8-bit chars to 6-bit six 6-bit six chars. Because of this, the full length of our binary representation must be a multiple of 8, but in the same time of 6. Since 24 is the smallest positive non-zero integer, which is in the same time a multiple of 8, but also 6, it means that every set of 3 ASCII characters will be transformed into a set of 4 Base64 characters. Ok, but uh, what do we do in case the length of our initial string is not a multiple of 3? Do you remember I told you there is an extra character in Base64 alphabet? Here is where we are going to use it. In case the last 3 char set has only 1 char, we will add at the end another 2 equal signs. Yes, equal sign is that extra character. If we have 2 chars, we will add only 1 equal sign. This process is called padding. Uh, the binary representation for pad is with zeros only. This extra character will always be at the end of the encoded string. You will never find an equal sign in the middle or at the beginning of a base64 string. So, for our case, where the full length is 10, we need to add two blocks for padding. And the full string will look like this. To be even easier to visualize, here you have it highlighted to see the three char sets. 
The next phase is to divide this big binary string into six bit chunks. So this is the string we currently have. After the split, it will look like this. Now, we are doing the reverse process to what we have made so far. We got the six bit chunks, so we will translate them into decimal values. Pay attention, because after this point, we will not use ASCII table anymore, but base 64 one. There are different values. The first binary block represents 18. As you can see, the second one has the same value, so again, 18. The third one is actually 1. Here we have also the rest of them. If we consult base64 table, we find that the corresponding character for 18 is uppercase S. The next one is again uppercase S. The complete translation would be this. But we know we padded the string with two extra characters. So the two uppercase A's are not really A's, but padding. Because of this, we will replace them with equal signs. And our final string is the following. Now, let's test if our algorithm is correct. I have created a Python script which encodes or decodes text in or from Base64. I will leave a link in the description in case you are interested. This script was created more to show exactly how Base64 works. I didn't want to reinvent the wheel since there are other integrated tools for this in the operating system. To run this script, I will pass dash "-e", argument for uh, encoding, and dash "-t", for text. I will type "-im root", and it should provide us the same answer as uh, the one we previously got. So, we have our script, dash "-e", for encoding, and dash "-t", for text. I'll type "-im root", and voila, here we have. This is the same string as we previously obtained. Now, I will do the same thing, but this time I will use an online base64 encoder tool. I will write the same text and click encode. Now, let's see. So, I have this page. I am root encode and voila. Same string as before. This shows us that um, our algorithm worked fine. There is another thing I want to show you. Again, we are on TryHackMe platform. Uh, however, at this time we won't focus on solving any challenge, even though we will actually do something similar. I just want to show you a real usage of Base64. I turned on the machine for day one from Advent of Cyber 1 and already created an account on that web page. The email is a random one, test.test.com and the password is test. After logging in, uh, I already did this, we can check the cookies using developer tools from the browsers. Here you have. So, Developer and my developer tools. Okay, we can see we have one cookie and its value is encoded in base64. Uh, not all cookies are encoded in base64, it's not a rule or something, but it applies to our case. If we take the value of this cookie and use my script, we will get the actual content of the cookie. So we're going to copy. dash d to decode, dash d for text, we're going to paste it, and here we have the result. Do you see the first part of it, this one, test? This is the password I set for that account. The rest of the string is a static part required as a flag, this is why I said earlier that somehow we will uh, solve a challenge. Of course, I'm not saying that you will find passwords in cookies. This is just a simple example of uh, a challenge from Try Hack Me. However, who knows what info you might get after decoding. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and it was useful for you. Let me know in the comments what you liked and what you didn't. And I want to thank you for watching and I'm waiting you at my next video. Bye bye!